this demonstration, we're going to be showcasing the extensive capabilities of IBM's enterprise insight analysis in law enforcement setting. In this scenario, law enforcement officials in Culver City, California, are investigating a drug-related burglary. There were two witnesses at the scene, and police obtained a description of a lime green vehicle leaving the scene. This demonstration is going to show how law enforcement can utilize EIA through the full life cycle of investigation so analysis can quickly analyze large internal and external data sets to narrow down the most relevant information to generate leads. Let's start with what we know. The witness mentioned seeing a lime green car fleeing the scene of a drug crime. So let's search our internal systems to start our search. We're going to begin with an information store quick search. This feature displays all the records within your internal database and it's in an easy to read format. The records are divided by entity, so you can look through available people, vehicles, locations, and more. You can also search records by attribute, narrowing down based on date of birth, gender, location, and others. Inputting Lime into the search bar yields numerous records of all entity types. When searching for Lime, Quick Search also does a semantic search, including records that reference similar colors such as green. Just a simple search of Lime returns many results and the answer might be in here, but the information we're looking for could be easily found using a visual query search. Visual query features an intuitive task pane that allows the user to customize their search by building the structure of entities and links that they're looking for. Again, let's use what we know. The lime green car, we want to know of any people tied to the vehicle and any addresses that might be linked to either entity type. We can define how entities link to one another and begin acquiring information stored in the database. Here, we'll put in Lime to search for a vehicle attribute and Culver City for the location. You can easily save these search queries if you find you enter certain criteria often. We need to run our query against the vehicle entity type. The search yields five records with one vehicle and two people, and we find they're connected. Let's add these to the chart. Now that's interesting. Let's look into these individuals, um, who they are, and what else that they're connected to. We can then return to our information store to expand the query with conditions. If we expand by address, the search returns an address for each possible su suspect. Now we can send that to the map. If we zoom in, we notice the two addresses pop up in California. Nothing out of the ordinary. We can again expand with conditions to find out more about the two possible suspects. We see that individual has a criminal record with multiple crimes reported. Activity view makes it easy to visualize each by moving from one to the other in order to gain some insight on their past criminal activity, such as the type of crime and when it occurred. We can remove the theft of services because it happened 10 years prior. Now that we know some background regarding our two suspects, we can use I2 Connect to pull in our external databases and search for more information on the identified entities. Using the Intel connector, we're going to expand our network to include any additional information found in the external database. The external search will add only add entities that are not already on your chart. Using the Intel connector to search for additional links to our individuals, we find a new piece of information. External search allows you to reach out to external databases and find information you might not have on hand. One of our suspects is a suspected member of the Tacoma Drug Syndicate. Running with this lead, we're going to repeat the external search, this time looking for links to the Tacoma Drug Syndicate within our external database. This search expands the network, populating the chart with five additional suspect members of the criminal organization. 
Next, we're going to pivot our investigation back to that lime green vehicle. When we run expand to include all additional records in the information store linked to that car, we're going to find that the vehicle was spotted on a surveillance camera. We can then add the surveillance camera to the map to pinpoint exactly where that car was spotted. We find that the footage of the car was captured in Tacoma, Washington, the same city where one of our suspects is thought to be involved in a drug syndicate. Taking a closer look at the camera, we see that its purpose was to keep a house under surveillance. We can run a geospatial query to see if we have any known locations or people uh, in the area within our database. We begin with a simple visual search linking addresses to people. Now that we have evidence to believe that the suspect is involved in a criminal activity in Tacoma, in Washington State, and in addition to that, to Culver City, California, we can run a geospatial query to see if the suspect is tied to any specific locations in the Tacoma area. Moving to the query conditions, we can specify which geographic area we want to search. Since we're looking for records related to the surveillance camera, we can draw a polygon around Tacoma and the surrounding area. The search comes up with one result, an address in Tacoma, which we can copy to our chart. Once we add the address to the map, you can see that the house is located just a few blocks away from the camera itself. Using the insert from palette pane, you can manually create a link between the house and the surveillance camera to show that they're co-located. Based on this, we know that the suspect car used in the original drug crime in Culver City has been spotted near a house under surveillance for suspicious activity in Tacoma. We also know that one of our suspects has ties to a drug syndicate also based out of Tacoma. To look for more leads, we have expanded our chart to show more connections and links to our entities. Using this broader network, we can work our way through the Analyze ribbon to find more insights. The List Items pane will show you all of the entities in list form where you can filter and organize by entity, entity type, or label. List Most Connected allows you to see entities with the most links to other entities, which helps the user clearly see the important and well-connected people and organizations on the chart. You can also sort by entities with the most inbound or outbound connections. One of the most useful features for analysis in bar charts and histograms is histograms. Bar charts and histograms allows you to easily view statistical data, such as crime and location trends. With date and time information in there as well, you're allowed to use histograms to bring in that temporal analysis. Any bar chart that I have available that I can view data on, I can sort by count. I can also bring in with that date and time information as a histogram to see those patterns in time very quickly. Anything I select in my histogram will brush onto my bar charts and the fields that apply to it, allowing me to fuse very quickly anything that's relating to it. With geospatial information such as addresses, I can then throw onto the map and start combining my histograms and bar charts with anything that pertains to the geolocation. If I want to focus on multiple periods of time, I select anything on the histogram that I can tie into and only view those specific periods of high activity, filtering down into them and seeing that pattern over time with the target time. use EIA to look at the two related cases and easily find where they connect. Here we have two case records. Using the expand function, we can populate the chart with all entities related to each of the cases. After the first expansion, there's no clear connections between the two cases. Instead of continuing to expand, 
uh, until we find something else, we can use uh, get the shortest path function to display the shortest connection between the two cases. We find both cases are connected to one cell phone, giving us an important lead to continue our investigation. Once we move on, law enforcement subpoenaed notionally the phone calls records resulting in the following network chart. Look at the call network that our suspect phone is attached to. We're going to run social network analysis. This identifies quickly different entities of interest, whether they might be high-level leaders, emerging leaders, gatekeepers, and financiers. Once we've run this tool, after we've identified identified our entities of interest, we can collapse all the links. We can use those links later to analyze the calls themselves. But here we want to take a look at just how the entities are connected. I want to start identifying anyone that's connected to my entities of interest. Using our visual search, we quickly select just our entities of interest. We can see all the entities that they're connected to, and we're going to isolate that information to really find the points of interest that can give us access to those entities that we want. Once everything is hidden, we'll rearrange and get that look and right off the bat, it draws our eyes to two phones who are outside of our entities of interest. They connect to our suspect phone, but also to three different entities of interest. One being a financier, a high value target, and a gatekeeper. And then also using the tool for social network analysis, we see that that suspect phone is a potential emerging leader. So now we have quick access to four different points if we focus on those lower players that can give us information to not just our suspect phone, but different important parts of this network. 